I'm really glad that the Bond franchise is done with its midlife crisis, because Skyfall seems to be a return to a more classic Bond feel. Casino Royale was trying to figure out where it stood with other action spy films. It was grittier and darker, like Batman Begins or The Bourne Ultimatum. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But with Skyfall, we get to see the ideas of old and new Bond come together. And if you didn't know that that was the theme of the movie, you will by the end. Duh, Q is young and Bond is old. Hey M, have you thought about retirement? You need us now because the game has changed. It's not like it used to be. Yeah, it's subtext that's actually on the surface. The story of Skyfall is a lot more personal than previous Bond films. MI6 is falling under harsh scrutiny as a drive containing all NATO operatives has become public and putting all agents in danger. On top of M, who is in charge of all of MI6, feeling harsh pressures from her higher ups, MI6 headquarters then falls victim to a terrorist attack. M is now being attacked on both a public and personal level. Of course, that personal connection leads us directly to our villain of the film, a former agent, Silva, played by Javier Bardem. Silva's initial encounter and subsequent scenes with Bond easily make him one of the standout villains of the recent films. But this great performance is undercut when the plot starts to borrow apples out of the Dark Knight's lunchbox. The parallels between the two are a little uncanny. And then even later on down the line, we suddenly start borrowing pages from Home Alone. However, while some may feel borrowed and some old and new, and we don't really have any blue things unless you count Adele's song, which is very melancholy. The plot clips along quite well, and there's quite a bit of fan service at the end of the movie. But if we can't jump back to the theme song real quick, again, maybe this is clashes of old and new, but usually with the theme song, there's one element in play. In Casino Royale, it was cards. In Goldfinger, it was images being projected onto women in gold. In Skyfall, well, water, blood, tombstones, hole in the chest. There are a lot of elements in play, and it doesn't feel as cohesive as I'd really like. I don't mean to come off like a purist or anything, though I'm sure I am, but at least add some girls to that dreary concoction. Well, I mean, there were girls, but they were in the iTunes visualizer section. And speaking of girls, while Skyfall may be a little light in terms of Bond women, it still offers you plenty of beautiful things to look at. How and why, you ask? That's because Roger Deakins is a bamf when it comes to cinematography. He's done Shawshank, Doubt, A Beautiful Mind, basically everything the Coen brothers have done, was visual consultant for How to Train Your Dragon and Wally, -E, and yet somehow still hasn't won an Oscar. Just look at these shots. You could take a still from anywhere in the movie, slap a product on top of it, and it would sell. Seriously, Academy, he's won three BAFTAs, and yet the nine times he's been nominated, he has a one absolute insanity and a little bit insulting. But to return to the other side of the coin, to things that don't exactly sell, well, from time to time, it's the tension. Skyfall has many action sequences, but while by the numbers that seems great, in several instances, I found myself completely uninvested. They just felt soulless and empty, and the only reason that I even remember them is because they looked so good. Asterisk, Roger Deakins is a bamf. That's not to say that there aren't good action sequences, it's just that they're patchy and the momentum never picks up to that final showdown. The stakes just felt deflated when they should have been through the roof. And I kind of attribute it to the fact that Bond feels somewhat secondary to the conflict. And now is the part where I get into spoilers, so click right here and skip ahead. Now what I mean in terms of secondary is that Silva really has no beef with Bond. He doesn't try to get him on his side, he isn't even really trying to cripple MI6. He just wants revenge on M. So Bond killing Silva doesn't feel that rewarding. It's nice that he's loyal, but it isn't really his fight. But M's death. That's what's supposed to really hit. That personal touch that's been running all through Skyfall comes to a head right here. So the confrontation may have been a little lame, but the emotion is still there. And with one M leaving, another M comes in. Oh my god, we have money, Penny! I was so happy for that reveal. And that coat rack. Oh, that coat rack. Sean Connery comes in and he tosses it and it lands on it. He's just so suave. Yeah, I guess I'm a bit of a purist. And now I'm really confused about the timeline because it seems like this is setting it up like it's before Dr. No, but we aren't in the 60s anymore. We're definitely in the modern day, so maybe there's a multiverse? I don't know. But however it works out, Skyfall marks a turning point in the Bond franchise. Director Sam Mendes managed to show that we can be both gritty and suave, so fans young and old can rejoice. The midlife crisis wasn't a waste. Buying the Aston Martin was worth it. So those are my thoughts on Skyfall. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and of course if you want you can check out previous reviews or follow me on any of them social networking sites, be it Facebook, Twitter, or Tumblr. So comment, click, and keep loving movies, guys. As for me, well, it's time for me to advertise some of these Roger Deacon prints. Budweiser, drink enough and you'll think you're this sexy. Supercuts, cause you know, his hair looks great, right? And this one's actually in movie, Caterpillar Inc. Because sometimes you want a machine to do more than just move dirt. You want to rip off the back half of a train and use it as a bridge.